To me, Irish people are the funniest in the world. They just are. Oh, this looks amazing. I just love any food that comes with its own home. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian. Anything else? Some greens. What do you think I am? A juggler? <laughs> Stunning. Inspirational. Would you look at the brush strokes on that? <laughs> I think the reason I see comedy in everything is because I was surrounded by it growing up. That's good. You wouldn't know we're 105. You're 105. Why? Do you know what? There's only one word for that. Absolutely cracker. Hi, how are you? In Ireland, one of the greatest compliments you can give someone is to describe them as a character. If you find any pearls, give them to me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on! You couldn't run the leg to yourself! Because as every writer knows, it's the characters you remember long after you've forgotten the story. Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lola Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club, a friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Jerry Flynn Events presents the original Beat in the Heat on the Costa del Sol. Now in its 23rd year, the Costa del Dance takes place between the 1st and the 11th of April 2024 at the Hotel Amaragua Torre Molinos. Prices start from £680 sterling or €782 Euros for a 7 or 10 night stay with dinner, bed and breakfast featuring the best in country, Irish, Kaylee and set dancing. To book, phone 01254 445 050 or visit jerryflynnevents.com. Hello, good evening and welcome to the show. Now for some time we've been hearing great stories about the Costa Gales GEA Club in Marbella in Spain. And while we've got those long dark nights and rainy days, the weather in Spain is absolutely beautiful. So we sent our own Chris Hazel off to Marbella in Spain to visit the Costa Gales GEA Club. Of course, there's a great Irish community out there and they're all centred around our national GA games. We'll also be seeing how powerful the Irish passport is right around the world. I've been here about 22 years, moved over in 2001, living in Marbella pretty much exclusively the whole time. A couple of mates decided one day when we finished university to, to go and travel Europe. And this was the first leg and apparently the last leg of the journey for me. Uh, once I got here, I just realized that, that there was something special about the place and decided to stay. In, in 2001, the, 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 the world had basically opened up with European travel, cheap flights. You know, it was all a new thing, the internet was coming in. Uh, obviously the Celtic Tiger was in full rip and, and people were making money and the options and the opportunities were open. Uh, but what happened was when we moved over here, we were missing something. There was something lacking, even though it offers a massive 
change in lifestyle, a, a better quality of lifestyle. And a couple of lads in the pub one day uh, said, you know what I really miss? I really miss my football club from back home and the GAA club. And that's how it started, over a pint. I'm from Coleraine originally, Port Stewart, Coleraine, the triangle up uh, north coast. Um, I'd been in Belfast for four years studying at uh, University of Ulster. I finished that and came straight out here. And, and like I say, I landed in Marbella and stayed and there was plenty to keep me here. I'm the chairperson of the club. Um, I've, I've held a couple of the roles over the years as I've learned about how the GA and the, and the community functions and the, the different levels and the different tiers of the provincial and the county and Croke Park and the voting systems. Um, so I'm actually chairperson of the club and I'm also chairperson of Iberia, the region, which is one of the sub-regions for Europe, run under uh, Gaelic Games Europe with John Murphy as the chairperson of it. Massive, massive sense of community that we've that we have naturally, instinctively uh, grown and developed over here, simply because you're in a foreign country. Um, you don't know the systems, you don't know the language essentially. Um, so when folks come over, you know, you get advice about good neighbourhoods to live in, great restaurants to go to. Obviously, we have sponsors and stuff that we, we encourage people to support who have been fantastic with us, Benny Mulligans and the Cala and Hogan Stam and San Pedro. I'm a primary school teacher, so I start at half eight in the morning, finish at half four, and I'm with my same class um, for the whole day. So I just do a bit of everything with them. Um, and yeah, it's just going really well. I'm really enjoying it. And it's just the British curriculum. So it's like the same as if I was in the UK or in Ireland, um, but just out in Spain. So I get to enjoy the nice weather as well as a really nice job. I was living in Dublin in Ireland and everything was just really expensive, rent was really expensive. A lot of my friends were immigrating to either Australia or Dubai or some European countries so I just thought I would give it a go and been here over a year and I can't see myself going back home for another while anyway. I joined the Costa Gales last September uh, so I've been a key part of the team since then and come down twice a week for training and it's just been great and it's really made me settle into Spain. I played uh, Gaelic football as a child and in school as well. It's like a mandatory part of our curriculum. And then the older I got, I kind of had hobbies that I preferred over Gaelic football and I stopped. I went back a few times um, in my teens, but um, I wasn't really ever a committed player or on the team. Last year we came third place, uh, which was really frustrating. We lost uh, by two points because we drew in our last game. Um, but this year so far we've played two tournaments and we're currently unbeaten so we're hoping to keep that going so hopefully at the end of the year we come home with the uh, Andalusian trophy. There's another team that have only lost to us so if we play them again and they beat us it will just come down to our points difference and our goals difference so it can get very uh, tense. <laughs> I'm the manager of Biddy Mulligans in La Cala de Mias. Uh, it's a big pub with a sports bar upstairs we do uh, live, all the live sports, we'll be showing all the GA matches, the international rugby matches, Munster and Leinster were playing last night. Um, and we have live music three nights a week. So it's, it's probably one of the biggest Irish pubs on the coast. And we've been sponsoring the Costa Gales since I arrived 10 years ago. I was born in uh, Leeds to Irish parents. My dad is from Belmullet and my mum is from Abbeyfield. So they moved over in the 70s. Um, me and my brother and two sisters came along then and we pretty much grew up as if we were in Ireland. We used to spend every weekend in the Irish Centre on the York Road. My dad, uh, PJ Riley, he actually uh, played for Yorkshire and he played for Great Britain in 70, I think it was two. He played in uh, Wembley against the uh, Kerry Junior team. So he would have been, GA was his life. He used to train the kids over there as well. Uh, myself, my brother included and um, yeah, the, the Irish Centre was kind of the heart and soul of our lives over there. He was a pioneer and he, he, uh, he, he worked all day um, in construction. So all he did was um, train and uh, train during the day when he was working and train at night and the Gaelic football. So he was a big man. So I, I'd be a smaller version of that, like, you know. I'm a 
teacher in Aloha College in Marbella uh, and I also spend most of my time outside of school at the GAA club. The job's busy, it's challenging as always teaching is. Um, you've got a lot of different personalities that you have to deal with but it's definitely rewarding in the end once it comes to the end of the year and you build them relationships up. The Irish passport definitely made an impact on me getting a job over here. It just makes travelling so much easier, um, especially being a teacher, you know, teaching as a passport to the world. So when I had applied for the job, it was a big uh, pull for me to come because I did have the Irish passport and I didn't have to get the visa process. Um, I didn't have to get the authentication and it's very much you come out here, you start the job and then if you settle down, you can stay here practically forever. When I played in Ireland, I played Camogie. I never played football, um, which is our only game here. Uh, we don't have enough facilities to hold the Harlan and Camogie. But I was definitely an avid Camogie. I played for university. Um, never considered myself a footballer. Hated the idea of it. I've played in Costa Gales for two years now. This has been my third year, so hopefully many more to come. My name is Tom Doolan, and I'm from Dublin. I'm over here uh, 15 years now. I just came across Costa Gales uh, four years ago and I came in then as just an ordinary member and then after that then I was approached then to come as a coach. So we're in that uh, last year I was uh, coaching the girls with uh, O'Shin and from that moment on uh, Oshie went back and I said I'd take the, the Costa Gales girls further afield and uh, coaching them now and we are well and good and truly up and running now so yeah things are good. I came over here in 1998 on a holiday and I decided at this stage that um, I think when I retire I should come over and, and, and live here and I haven't looked back. I came over here and looked you know, I just say what's happening and took in the sunshine, the weather, the food, good friends. And uh, no, I, I do miss Ireland to a degree. So there's more Irish over here now and we keep our Irish relationships very strong here. We actually have a, a pretty strong panel compared to clubs back home of about 28 or 30. Um, there, there's a huge change over in players here. Uh, obviously people might come for six months, they might come for a year. Uh, some people stay, uh, other people stay connected to the club. That's a massive part of it. So I'm still playing, play fullback, try my best, get plenty of abuse for it, as fullbacks always do. Go fullbacks. Um, and you just have to keep going because over here the lifestyle allows you to enjoy with the good weather, to, to, to stay fit and stay healthy and encourages you to do it as well. We have like a, a mini CCC that arranges the games between the clubs to, to always, we have this, um, that the aim is to always make sure that there's as much fairness in terms of the amount of traveling that each club has to do and the amount of time that we can get on the pitch. Um, we've got pretty good at it over the years. We've ran various systems depending on the number of clubs that are viable and able to field teams. We've amalgamated clubs and we've amalgamated teams um, and that kind of dictates our structure every year. So for the last few years uh, it's basically been a league um, after COVID, we came out of it with a development league where we played sevens and we split clubs into two to allow maximum game time. We have evolved from that now back into more normal game structures. So the standard in Europe is 11 a side. Um, they play a tournament structure in Europe, but we play league because we want 30 to 60 minute games if we can get it. And then we just set the dates and have people turn up for like many, many league games and double down on them in the day. But we don't do a knockout structure at this stage because it just wouldn't sit with the travel and the amount of time and effort that goes into it. It wouldn't be fair. There's such a range and diversity of people in this club, it's amazing. And you get, I think today we were counting the kids and we were, we were arguing over who was from where. So you have a Spanish kid, a Galway kid, two from Tipperary, three from Dublin, one from Derry, one from Down. And, and that mix in itself is fantastic for the kids and it's fantastic for the club because you bring both a diff, different social rationale which you might not have been exposed to back home, but you definitely bring a different football rationale um, because you get to see fellas play how they would have grown up playing and your game evolves and develops and, and improves from that. It's great to see our national GA games being played right around the world, keeping communities together in sport. We'll see you after the break.
To me, Irish people are the funniest in the world. They just are. Oh, this looks amazing. I just love any food that comes with its own home. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian. Anything else? Some greens. What do you think I am? A juggler? <laughs> Stunning. Inspirational. Would you look at the brush strokes on that? <laughs> I think the reason I see comedy in everything is because I was surrounded by it growing up. That's good. You wouldn't know we're 105. You're 105. Why? Do you know what? There's only one word for that. Absolutely cracker. Hi, how are you? In Ireland, one of the greatest compliments you can give someone is to describe them as a character. If you find me pearls, give them to me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> come on, Sloco! Come on, come on! You couldn't run the leg for yourself! Because as every writer knows, it's the characters you remember long after you've forgotten the story. Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Jerry Flynn Events presents the original Beat in the Heat on the Costa del Sol. Now in its 23rd year, the Costa del Dance takes place between the 1st and the 11th of April 2024 at the Hotel Amaragua Torre Molinos. Prices start from £680 sterling or €782 Euros for a 7 or 10 night stay with dinner, bed and breakfast featuring the best in country, Irish, Kaylee and set dancing. To book, phone 01254 445 050 or visit jerryflynnevents.com. Welcome back. Now this week we sent our own Chris Hazel off to visit the Costa Gales GEA Club in Marbella in Spain. The club has to travel long distances to play their games and they frequently travel to Gibraltar to play other GEA clubs in that region. After about five years of work and investment, we've finally got a couple of new clubs established in Malaga, Celta Malaga. Uh, Gibraltar Gales and Erog Seville have been around for a good few years now, 10 plus years. Um, Lisbon have come on the scene and evolved into a very strong competitor. They have decided to, to join our league, even though they're a wee bit uh, out, of, out of in distance, in terms of distance, they're a bit far away. But that's why we, we facilitate the structure of the league for that. Everyone's turning up for Gibraltar. Um, our system allowed a buy this year for any team that, that, that knew they couldn't make a tournament. Um, but made things a bit difficult organisationally, but uh, this particular one's in the Europa Point, which looks over the Mediterranean. Um, fantastic position. You can see Morocco on a clear day. Great facilities. Um, so Gibraltar, Seville, Lisbon, Malaga and ourselves, men's and ladies, are turning up for for one of our tournament stroke league days. Everyone plays one hour of football, so it's like you're going for a full match. There's two pitches, the ladies will be playing on their on their own pitch, um, which is fantastic because it allows us to keep the day a wee bit shorter. The days can drag on on, on a long day, uh, whereas back home we're used to turning up, playing your an hour before, playing your hour, and then maybe getting changed for an hour. Uh, whereas we might turn up on a day at 11 a.m. and not finish till six in the evening or seven in the evening. The difference being is, 
we do the third half over here where everyone sticks around and has a beer even with the opposing team um which is interesting <laughs> to say the least but it works out well so we have men's and ladies clubs lisbon are in development and uh gibraltar's ladies are in development and we have a youth club and what we try to do is bring all the the kids from all ages from 17 under to different events so we have like a fela and catheters every year and we 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 pull together for that it's a bit difficult for us at the moment because we're not uh in terms of the 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 age and the maturity of the club we're not there yet where we have that underage uh, uh tranche coming through but that's that's happening now like my young fella jake he's 14 so and he's been in the club since day day one so that age group is beginning to filter in and through and it's the same problems as back home it's keeping them interested, keeping them focused, giving them games as best we can and, and um, trying to keep them from uh, moving to other sports because that's our biggest competition over here is other sports. There's so much opportunity and so many options. As time goes on, you have an awful lot of people who want to come over here, who are here for so many months to a year with their job and they want to keep their Irishness and uh, they came and joined each different club. So Costa Gales will be in the Marbella area, uh, Malaga is most of the people. And then the other Irish that are in Gibraltar and Seville, well, Seville I think are more for the students. And I think basically uh, that's how all the Irishness has, has come. And it's getting stronger and stronger every year. The more Irish and, and there's English and there's Scottish and there's all nationalities here and we're all as one community, like we're not just because we're Irish and we play the game as the way it is in Ireland, we're enhancing our sport to the likes of people who never played it before and that gives us a great insight that we see so many different nationalities who are now interested in our game and I have to say you know if if they were back in Ireland and playing in some of the county teams back in Ireland they would be fairly up there with the teams at home you know so well done to them but we've two people who are coming after Christmas and they're from uh, Belgium and uh, you know they're, they're wanting to join the club and they'd be more than welcome so here we go again, we're starting to see more nationalities coming in. Shauna, the bent, the fence, midfield, Emer, Ellie, Haley in front of Emer and centre half forward. I'm then... from a small village called Rishargan in County Antrim. When I was moving over I was desperate to find out just advice on actually moving over on an Irish passport such as taking your car over, uh, best places to live. So I was posting in a lot of Facebook group chats and one of the people that got back to me was Justin Parts. He just sent me a message saying, you know, he lives over here, uh, there's a GA club and whenever I get over to shoot my text. So I think I literally landed in the country sat down for a coffee and I got a phone call from him and he said he'd be down at 8 o'clock to pick me up for training and that was it, the rest is history. It's definitely uh, one of the roughest games I've ever played. I've managed to go my entire camogie career without an injury and in Gaelic football I've had two injuries in the past year. Last December I broke my hand, dislocated finger and then as soon as I recovered after that, three weeks in, I broke my wrist um, in two places. So I'm still on the mend from that and hopefully there's no more breaks going forward this tournament. The issue you have is that you've got guys who know what they're doing and guys that don't know what they're doing. So sometimes it results in the same thing with um, tough injuries. I remember I saved a shot in Gibraltar once and uh, I was just saying to myself that was a bit of a stinger and I looked down and this finger was pointing out to the side. So I popped that back in, taped it up, carried on playing. And then I've had numerous rib injuries over the years where um, a guy had hit you with a shoulder, maybe into the chest or a closed fist, and uh, I don't have much padding on me. So uh, they're, the, they're the sore ones, but luckily nothing too serious. I'd be probably one of the more experienced players. I kind of started playing when I was in Leeds when I was about four years of age, and uh, I'm now 45, so I probably um, i am old enough to be some of the players' dads, if not granddads. Um, so I'd be probably one of the, one of the better players in the team. Um, I've played in that pretty much every position in the team, from goalkeeper to full forward, midfield, wing, wing back. Um, but uh, I just enjoy playing and uh, helping the rest of the lads. You've got all different abilities. A guy came over last year from uh, Clay and Ender, and he's a very, very good footballer. I think he just won a junior championship in England. Uh, and then you've got guys who've never played the game before. 
So the main thing for me over here is that everyone plays, has fun, and uh, ideally nobody gets injured. Uh, although usually that person's me who gets injured. So I'm getting a little bit older and a little bit slower. <laughs> As an Irish passport holder, it was very, very easy. It was just as simple as book your flight, move out, and then just apply for your NIE, and it was no problem at all. So when I came out to Spain, I joined a few groups on Facebook just for accommodation and then like kind of social groups. And I saw that there was like an Irish in Marbella group. So I joined on that and I saw that there was a Gaelic football club being advertised only 10, 15 minutes from where I was staying. So I messaged uh, Hayley who had posted it on Facebook and she just told me all the details about training. I came down and I immediately just fell in love with it and just felt like a bit, little bit of home, but in the sunshine. <laughs> two goals, 15 points up. <laughs> right, two goals, 15 points up to one point. The community is massive down here. There is loads and loads of um, Irish out and also where I work there's a good few. Being tall is definitely an advantage to Gaelic football because you're trying to catch high balls that are coming in or you're trying to go up against your opponent and definitely being tall is an asset and um, being able to jump up higher than your opponent so it's good. It's very fast paced and it's very competitive and yeah like injuries like people are prone to injuries there you can you can get a bad tackle uh, shoulders and stuff but fortunately I haven't been injured yet so <laughs> I'll keep going till I am. We've travelled to Seville, to Lisbon, to Malaga, to Gibraltar. It's a really really social club, everyone gets along really well but there's also that commitment and the passion for the sport and um, kind of the winning mentality as well so you get a bit of everything when you come down, a bit of family and a bit of like sport and an active lifestyle. My wife has got uh, five brothers and two sisters, so literally there's a constant stream of them coming over, like which is great now. It's great for the kids as well, like and, and for my wife as well. Like so, it's the three young kids over here. It's important to be to have a um, a family around you. And the Costa Girls is like a family to us, like you know where um, sometimes you can feel feel lonely, a bit homesick, and it's it's important to come down here at the weekend and spend time with our friends and for the kids as well. I've got. Um, a five-year-old down here training and a seven and nine-year-old up there training as well. So it's fantastic for them like, you know, to feel part of it, like, you know. I was home last June for the first time in four years or something like that, four or five years. I don't get home as much, so I've developed more on this side than I have on the other side. So I do my best to keep it as Irish as Irish and as Dublin as Dublin can be. Yeah. <laughs> Marbella has really almost come out of itself over the last couple of years with more people travelling over again and the lifestyle. Um, socially it's fantastic, everyone over here is in the same boat, everyone has moved over without family, they've started a life here so it's very easy to make really close connections. I know myself that over the last two years, um, any time that I may be thinking about moving elsewhere, it's always been the GA club that's really held me back here and the friends that I have here, they really are a family to me. Everyone's welcome to the GAA, everyone is welcome to Costa Gales uh, or any of the clubs that they find around and you know, long may it last, that's all I say, long may it last. You know. It's great to see our national GAA games alive and well and been played all around the world. And of course that all-important Irish passport makes travelling around Europe so easy. If you're interested in playing Gaelic football, why not contact your local GAA club? You never know, you might be eligible for an Irish passport. And if you feel you are, then contact your local Irish embassy wherever you may live. A big thank you to Chris Hazel for bringing us that report from the Costa Gales GEA Club in Marbella in Spain. We'll be back next Thursday evening at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. See you then. Bye.